Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 14.4, Approximating Square Roots. We are going to be writing 10 things down today, and our notes are going to be um, broken up into three parts. The first one will be classifying numbers, so are they integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, um, etc. Then the next thing we're going to look at is estimating square roots, and then finally we'll look at comparing square roots. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to make sure is we know what an irrational number is and that cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. This definition right here is the best thing to write down. That's going to include things like pi because it repeats, um, the square root of 2 because they're not perfect squares, or like the square root of 8 or the square root of 10. Um, any number that does not repeat or terminate, that's going to be considered an irrational number because we cannot write them as a fraction. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video here. You can write down some examples as well. And once you're done, click play to see what number two has in store. So number two is actually a diagram that we're going to draw in our notes. This is very beneficial to understanding what is um, an irrational number, what's a real number. So we have the start, which is here in the beginning, natural numbers. And that's just when you learn to count. You learn to count by starting at one, and then you just keep counting up by whole numbers. Whole numbers is a little bit different because now they include zero. Integers include all natural numbers, all whole numbers, and negatives. And then rational numbers, remember, are numbers that can be written as fractions as well, and those include decimals, like you can have negative one-half or positive one-half. Real numbers are all numbers that just can be written as numbers. And then irrational numbers, remember, are numbers that are not going to, re not going to repeat and not going to terminate. You are going to copy this diagram in your notes. Let's go ahead and pause the video here so you can see the differences between natural, whole, integer, rational, real, and irrational. And once you're done, click play so you can see how some of them are categorized. All right, so this one you're just going to watch, and we're going to talk about each reasoning. Um, let's start with the square root of 12. The square root of 12 is considered irrational because there's no perfect square for 12. Something times something as a whole number does not equal to 12. It could possibly be like a decimal, but it's going to be a repeating decimal. The next one, letter B, that one is irra or sorry, that one's rational. The reason is is because it is a repeating decimal, and we'll learn next lesson how to write repeating decimals as fractions. The next one, letter C. That one is going to be an integer and a rational number. The reason is, is, we can, is because we can find the square root of 9, that's 3, and then we keep that negative number, which makes it negative 3, and that means we also can write that number as a fraction. Negative 3 can be written as negative 3 over 1, okay? So really, technically, any whole number also will be considered a rational number. This next one, 72 over 4, is all of the above, natural, whole number, integer, and rational number. The reason is, is because 72 over 4 is a fraction, so that's check, rational number. It's an integer because it's either a positive or negative whole number. It's a whole number because it's a positive number starting at 0. And it's also a natural number because that's one of the numbers you use to count, 18. It's equal to 18. The last one, pi, is irrational, and that's because that one doesn't repeat and it does not end, so therefore we can't really write it as a fraction. We do have a term for it, and that's, or that we do have a symbol for it, and it's that right there. Um, but really, it is considered irrational because it um, doesn't repeat and it does not terminate. So the next one you're going to try on your own, and remember you're going to classify these numbers with as many words as you can. So let's go ahead and pause the video here, try the questions, and once you're done, click play. And here, remember, this is the bank of words that you're using. Okay, so for number three, this one is considered an irrational number. The reason is, is because it's not ending or not terminating. And it's also not repeating. Okay, so those are your two reasonings as to why those are. For number four, this one's a little bit interesting. So if we found the square root of 196, that's 13. So my answer is negative 13, okay? This is not a natural number, and it's not a whole number, but it is an integer, and it's also a rational number. 
the reason why it's not a whole number is because remember whole numbers start at zero. So you have to be starting at zero for whole numbers. Integers can go into the negative, so, okay? And then the last one, number five, that one is also considered an irrational number. The reason is, is because the cube root of two is not a whole number, and that, decimals, that decimal that we would get is going to repeat, um, and it's not going to end. The next thing we're going to talk about is estimating square roots. So estimating square roots just means we're not giving a perfect square, and we're trying to find the decimal to the closest tenth of it, or to the decimal point. For this one, letter A, you just have to think about what square roots is between square the square root of 8. I have a perfect square of 4, and I also have a perfect square of 9 right there, okay? So that means this square root of 8 answer is going to be between 2 and 3, because the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. It is a little bit closer to 3, so how you would estimate this is you would actually work out some multiplication. I do 2.8 times 2.8 maybe just to start. That's going to give me 7.84, so that's not quite close enough, maybe. Let's see. We'll do 2.9 times 2.9 also. You also you'd want to make sure that you are multiplying by two numbers just to see which one is closest. This one's going to give us 8.41, so this 2.8 is actually closest to 8. So we'll say for letter B, when we estimate to nearest tenth, it's going to be about 2.8. We're not going to get the exact number here just because we're estimating to nearest tenth and not going on to hundreds, thousands, etc. Again, with letter this next one, negative 13, you just have to think of the two possible square roots that are closest to 13. Um, I know one would be the square root of 9, or the negative square root of 9. And then on the other side, we have the negative square root of 16. So that means in between the, ne the numbers negative 3 and negative 4. Okay, so that would be part A, in between negative 3 and negative 4. And then part B, you're actually estimating. I'm going to estimate here, here again in the middle. Maybe we could say, let's figure out what 3.5 times 3.5 is. And that's going to give us 12.25. So that is pretty close, but just to be sure, we're going to do 3.6 times 3.6. And the reason why I chose 3.5 is because it's kind of right there in the middle. Um, 3.6 times 3.6 gives us 12.96. That's actually going to be closest. So we're going to say negative 3.6 would be estimating to the nearest tenth for this one. Okay? The next two you're going to try on your own. Again, you're going to tell me in between what two integers is it, so in between what two whole numbers, and then estimate to the nearest tenth. So let's go ahead and pause the video here. Try both of these, and then once you're done, click play. Okay, for number 6, this is going to be between the square roots of negative 16 and negative 25. So that's negative 4 and negative 5. So those are your two um, whole numbers or two integers that it's between. Then we've got to figure out our decimal. It is super, super close to 25, so I would estimate maybe starting at 4.8 and just seeing what 4.8 times 4.8 gives you. That would give us about 23.04. And then one more time with 4.9 times 4.9. That's going to give us 24.01. So we're actually going to use 4.9. So letter B would be negative 4.9 because it's closest to 24. Okay. With number 7, the two square roots that are on either side of 110 is the square root of 100 and the square root of 121, which means that's between 10 and 11. 110 is kind of in the middle of 100 and 121, so I would maybe start with 10 point maybe 5 and see what that gives us. That's going to give us 110.25, so 10.5 times 10.5 is 110.25. I maybe even drop down to 10.4 just to see if that one's closer, and that one's going to be 108.16, so 10.5 would be our top notch one there, okay? The last little bit is when we're comparing them. So again, this is going back to using estimating your square roots and then comparing it with another number. I already know that 2 and 2 thirds is 2.6 repeating. With the square root of 5, that's going to be, remember, between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. The square root of 4 is super, super close to the square root of 5, and we know that the square root of 4 is 2, so I would estimate that the square root of 5 is going to be probably like 2.1 or 2.2, and if you actually worked it out, 2.2 times 2.2 is 4.84, 4 
and that's super close to square root of 5. So technically, the square root of 5 is 2.2. So if you estimate, if you're comparing 2.2 and 2.6, this one is greater because 2.6 is larger than the about 2.2. Okay, so that's what you're going to try here. Then instead of just um, comparing, you're actually going to order. Um, so maybe even think about what 100 divided by 3 is first. That's going to give you a number, and then you can find the square root or estimate that. Let's go ahead and pause the video here for number 8. Try it, and once you're done, click play. Okay, so for number 8, you're looking at the square root of 38, the square root of, I'm going to say, 33.3, .3, and then 6.5. All right? I know the square root of 38 is really close to the square root of 36, and actually all of these are. The square root of 38, I would maybe say, would be about 6.2. Um, the square root of 33 and one-third, that's going to be about 5.8, because it's lower than 36. Um, so now that gives us kind of a clearer picture of what's smallest and what's largest. 5.8, 6.2, and then 6.5. So your least to greatest order would be 100 over 3, and then the square root of 38, and then 6.5. Okay? The last two, you're going to try to figure out which one is greater and then explain yourself. So let's go ahead and pause here to try 9 and 10, last two in our notes, and once you're done, click play. All right, so for number 5, I know that 4 and 1 fifth is 4.2, and then the square root of 3, that's really close to the square root of 25, so that's going to be upper 4. So if we have 5 here, this might be like 4.8 or 4.7 maybe. Um, with that, I would say that the square root of 23 is greater, and the reason is is because 4.8 is greater than 4.2, and remember 4.8 is approximately the square root of 23, okay? With number 10, you didn't even have to really do this one because you're comparing a positive and a negative. A positive is always going to be larger, but in the event that you did, the square root of 10 is about 3.2. And the square root of negative 5 is about negative 2.2. And obviously, 3.2 is greater than negative 2.2. And that's why we choose the square root of 10 is greater. Okay. That's going to conclude our video for today. Thank you so much for hanging in there. I know there's a lot of stuff today. Um, go back up and watch the video if you need to. And we'll catch you next time.